Hi, Professor. Um, tell us where we are. Willeroy. Now we are in the highest point in the city center or in the downtown, which allows you to explore the uh, houses of the commons or the houses of the ordinary people and the royalty or the houses of the royal family. And you can tell that the upper part has palaces of the royalty and each house from the very beginning down there where you see the, the course or the valley down there and the donkeys, each house has a higher level. It depends on your ranking in the royal family. And the part below the palaces are the houses of the people or the riffraff, as you may call them, or the, the, the houses of the common. And the lowest part of all is the shops. That is the um, ordinary design of uh, Petra strategic location made Nabataeans the wealthiest in the ancient world because they work in trade. They offered services, high quality services, they offered uh, security, they offered um, guidance and uh, in, in, um, um, in, in contrast they uh, received high taxes and tolls to enable them to become the wealthiest at that time. I'm talking about the period between the first century BC and the first century AD. During that time, Nabataeans controlled all the trade routes and made them connected to Petra to become the center. And we found a stone here, it belongs to a huge wall called Trajan Wall, which says Metropolis Petra Epigayo, Petra the great city on the giant of the earth. And I think you agree with them, Leroy. <laughs> Okay, so Professor, uh, tell us about what's, what, what is down yeah. before us. Well, down there is the Nabataean Theatre. The Nabataean Theatre copes with 4,000 audience because they divided the viewer seats from 40 up to 60 centimeters to find out that the full capacity of the theatre is 4,000, which is 10% of the whole number of population. That means Petra was inhabited by 40,000 people during the highlight of Petra or the Golden Age, which was between the 1st century BC and the 1st century AD. If you look carefully, you would see that the theater was built after the houses. The houses of the common continue all the way to the other side of the theater. When they decided to carve the theater down there, they included some of these houses. So these big squares you see are not, not sky boxes. They are just houses included in carving of the theater. And the interior part are the chambers inside each of the houses. As the crack down there has two or three houses, as you can see with the same design of the cross steps. That is the same way how all the houses continue even beyond this mountain from the other side. So when we talk about 40,000 people, it is a large number. Nowadays, the total number of the population of, of the Petra region is not more than 35,000 uh, people. So during that time, Petra was full of people and it was one of the most active cities in the whole, in the whole ancient world. They established their great relationship with all the ancient cultures and the Nabataean culture is unique for its a great mixture of the Greek, Roman, Babylonian, Assyrian and Egyptian architecture and that made it yet more unique because of that great mixture of many civilizations melted in one pot called the Nabataean. So Nabataeans were nomadic Arab tribes first changed into very well organized people in a very short period of time. Therefore they took advantage of their strategic location in the heart of the Middle East and they established Petra as, as, as the, the metropolis or as the capital city of the great kingdom, which expanded from Sheba of the past or from uh, Yemen to Syria at the north and from Babylonia to the east as far as the Mediterranean to the west. And Petra was just the capital city. If you want to talk about the whole number of population of the whole kingdom might have been more than two million people. Strategic location is here in Petra. Can you say that again? Location, location, location. 
because location is the most important they have chosen the best location in the whole area in the middle of nowhere and they succeeded to lead everybody to this location as an important metropolitan city between 100 BC and 180 and they didn't want any interference of the outer world uh, he was allowed to visit Petra in 1812 and he pretended that he wanted to do his vow on top of Aaron Mountain, the farthest mountain in Petra. On his way, he discovered Petra and he brought it to light to the Western world. I don't think it is fair to say it was explored, but he brought it to light to the Western world in, 18, uh, in uh, 1812. And uh, since that time, Petra became um, an important city and it started to retain its fame uh, as a tourist attraction or one of the major sites in, in Jordan and one of the premier uh, tourism destinations in the world.